Yeah, so reduced order models are, um, let, let's think about like, when I look at a movie of a flow field, I can close my eyes and I can picture what it would do forward in time. That's a reduced order model. Mm -hmm. I'm not running maybe your Stokes in my head. Yeah. <laughs> I'm playing, you know, some kind of a reduced order model that's predicting the future. Mm -hmm. And these can be extremely useful. So if I want to do estimation or prediction or control in real engineering systems, like a you know gas turbine engine or a flow over a Boeing wing or something like that, I need to know what's going to happen very, very quickly. The time scales are ultra compressed. You know, the flow might go from the leading edge to the trailing edge in a fraction of a second on a large scale uh, commercial jet. And so if I'm going to do something to modify that flow, I need to act now. Okay, so the, the lower the latency, the better for control. So I need fast decisions. And they don't have to be perfect decisions. That's the really important point is that for control and for other modeling, you know, and optimization techniques, often my prediction of the future doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough for control. And so what reduced order models do is they're constantly balancing this accuracy and efficiency trade-off. I want models that are as efficient as possible and as accurate as possible. And these are pulling me in opposite directions. I could solve a supercomputer computation of that flow, but it might take me you know, a million processors six months. So that's not gonna cut it for flow control in real time. You know, Maybe I can build some cheesy linear model that is blazing fast in terms of two variables, but it's not quite accurate enough to give me the prediction I need to do my control uh, effectively. And so you're trying to find this sweet spot of models that are just complex enough, you know, that they're, they give you the key mechanisms that you need to describe, and they're efficient enough that you can run them in real time for the control or for whatever uh, real time task you're looking for. And so reduced order models, again, you're basically taking your flow you're trying to distill it into these key coordinates, these key patterns that matter and get just the minimal skeletal model for how those patterns interact either linearly or non-linearly in time. And so that's, I mean, in a nutshell, that's kind of the philosophy of reduced order modeling is mm -hmm. to balance accuracy and efficiency to get a good enough answer really, really fast. Mm -hmm.